All right, welcome back to another lesson in calculus. We are working on the derivative right now, and we've been working hard. We've been studying in this unit, we've been studying the continuity, the intermediate value theorem, and the definition of the derivative. We're going to continue making connections between derivatives, their graphs, and points where the derivative is not defined, a place where we say the function is not differentiable. So right off the bat, I want you to practice. I want you to label the x values where this function appears to not be continuous um, and appears to not be differentiable. Uh, so one thing, the a function is considered not differentiable at the endpoint, so we could say that uh, at x equals 0 and x equals 10 that that function is not differentiable at those endpoints, but let's just assume that this graph goes on uh, goes on forever in the in, in that direction. Okay, so go ahead and give that a try and tell and pause the video, and then we will discuss. Okay, so first, where is this function not continuous? It is not continuous at x equals six because of a jump discontinuity. Um, and is there anywhere else? I don't see any. Okay, so let's go to B. Well, where is it not differentiable? Well, at x equals 6, because it's not continuous. Uh, but also at x equals 3, because there is a cusp there. Now, it's a little difficult to see, but I think also at x equals 5, because at x equals 5, that's a very sharp point there. That is not a smooth transition. Um, but if you left that one off, maybe you disagree with me, and that's fine. We're just kind of estimating here. And then at x equals 8, that is clearly not differentiable uh, because it's a cusp, and uh, it would, it's going towards an infinity. So here, we got x equals 3, we got here, and we got this jump, and we got there. All right, so that's kind of what it's all about. Differentiable must be continuous and smooth. Okay. We got another, yet another practice problem for you to accomplish. Okay, uh, the slope of the tangent line to a function at a point x equals c is simply referred to as the slope of the graph at c. I, I kind of find that a little bit sloppy. Um, we think of lines as having slope, but we'll say a graph has a slope. We'll say, hey, what's the slope of the graph there? What we really mean, I think, is the slope of the tangent line there. But with that in mind, let's answer these questions. At which label points is the slope of the graph zero, positive, or negative? Give it a try. Okay, so um, I would say the slope of the graph is zero whenever the tangent line is horizontal. That's what makes it a zero slope, right? So there and there. Those are the horizontal tangent lines. Those are the values where the slope is zero. So I'm going to say at B and at E. The graph has a positive slope anytime the graph is increasing, anytime it's going up. The tangent line at C would be positive. The tangent line at D would be positive, right? So we'll say C and D. But it's negative at A and, you know, depending on where you think F is, as long as it's not on that end point or if it, the graph keeps going, uh, we're going to say as F as well, okay? All right. Next, uh, we have a couple problems for me to do with you. So uh, these are kind of classic problems from the AP exam. It's a, it's a good way to test your knowledge of the definition of the derivative. So let's take a look. Uh, suppose the function f satisfies that f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 is equal to 5h minus 3h squared plus 9h cubed for all real number h. Find f prime of 2. So all we have is this rule about how f behaves when you add something to it. So the, we can't use a graph. Uh, we can't use any of the kind of shortcuts that we'll try and learn throughout the year. We have to go back to the definition of the derivative. So here we go. Um, the limit as, well, it seems like we're using, this is f of 2 plus h minus f of 2. So this is definitely the original definition, not the alternate. So the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2, right? 
f of x plus h minus f of x, but our x is 2, all over h. We are then told that we can replace 2 plus h minus f of 2 with this entire statement here. 5h minus 3h squared plus 9h cubed. And all that is over h. Well, how convenient, because they gave us something where there's an h in each term. So I'll just divide each term by h. So the limit as h goes to 0. And I get 5 minus 3h plus 9h squared. I'll send h to 0, making this 5 minus 0 plus 0. The answer is 5. So f prime, uh, don't know much about f, but I know that f prime of 2 must be 5. Let f be a function. Example 2. Let f be a function such that f of x plus y equals f of x minus 4f of y plus 9xy for all real numbers x and y. And suppose that the limit as h approaches 0 of f of h over h equals 2. Find f prime of x. Oof, this is a pretty pretty nasty little AP problem here. The the hint is that limit as h goes to 0. We see that limit as h goes to 0. We think, okay, I've I, I got to be using that. I got to use that original uh, definition of the derivative to find f prime of x. And, you know, they, they gave us x plus h instead of x, x plus y instead of x plus h. But we can use any letter we want. In fact, some textbooks use delta x instead of h. So you can, you can use anything you want. All right, let's, let's take a look at this. We know that f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. f of x plus h, we have to use this formula. So it would be f of x minus 4 f of h plus 9xh, then minus f of x, because of that part, all over h. Let me try and make sure that everybody's with me on that. This f of x plus h got entirely replaced with this, but except for everywhere there's a y, it's not an h. So f of x minus 4f of h plus 9xh. And then I put the extra minus f of x at the end, which is nice because it gets rid of that garbage. I should write limit every time, yes. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 4 f of h over h plus, and I'm just going to split this limit apart here, 9x. So I, I took h and I divided into that term and I divided into that term. So um, I have negative 4 f of h all over h, and then I have 9x, and the h is cancel. And because I have plus, I just went ahead and split the limit around it. So we can pull this negative 4 out. Let me scroll down a little bit here. We could say negative 4, negative 4 times the limit as h goes to 0. We're allowed to pull out a constant of a limit, right? Constant multiple. And then I have the limit as h goes to 0 of 9x is simply 9x because there's no h in it at all. And they told me that the limit as h goes to 0 of f of h over h is 2. So this is just negative 4 times 2 plus 9x. So you get negative 8 plus 9x. And that is the derivative. Pretty interesting problem, huh? All right. So what I want you to do now is I want you to answer... These questions, I love these. Uh, the person that I that put together these notes did such a cool job with these. These really, really. Um, oh, yes, I borrow a lot of from my notes. I borrow from lots of different places, including my own brain. But this, most of these notes come from a teacher in Houston. Anyway, uh, would you write must, might, or never about whether or not this is true? And I will be impressed if you get them all right. But give it a try. Pause the video, and then we'll talk about it. All right. Well, I hope you had fun with that, right? Okay, so we have given the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x minus f of 5 over x minus 5 equals 3. What in the Sam Hill is that telling us, right? 
That is the alternate definition of the derivative. And don't think the word alternate is somehow that is good. It's just a different version. It's the same thing, right? So what that's telling me is that, and, and the alternate definition of the derivative, let me, let me write that down. Hold on, let me write that down. Uh, uh, we know that f prime of c, it's usually written in terms of c, is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c all over x minus c. And you got to have that definition down pat, y'all. All right, so what this is telling me, th this here, this this limit as x approaches 5 of f of x minus f of 5 or x minus 5, that is f prime of 5. And it's telling me that it's 3. That's what that says. This must be true because that's exactly what it's saying. And then it says f prime of 5 equals 0. No, never, because we already know what it is. It's 5. It's 3, excuse me. f of 5 equals 3. Well, I don't know, actually. I mean, it's quite possible. We've seen that happen. We saw the derivative have the same value as a function. It's kind of rare out of all the numbers it could be, but it's possible. So I'll say might. What about f is continuous at x equals 0? Do I have any information about x equals 0? The only information I know, and I know it so well, that f prime of 5 equals 3, that's the information I have. I have nothing about x equals 0. So might, you know, probably, I don't know. Maybe it's got an asymptote awesome there. f is continuous at x equals 5. Well, can I say that's true? Yes. How do I know? You were supposed to be explaining, and I've been explaining out loud. You should be writing. Must, because why? Because F is differentiable there. How do I know it's differentiable at X equals 5? How do I know that F is differentiable there? Because the derivative at 5 is a real number. And to be differentiable, you must be continuous and smooth. So not only know that F is continuous at 5, I know it's smooth at 5 has local linear area if you want me to be technical. What about this? The limit as x approaches 5 of f of x is equal to f of 5. That is one of the three conditions, that, that's the strongest condition that must hold for something to be continuous at x equals 5. Because f is continuous at x equals 5. That's the definition of continuity. To say that f is continuous at x equals 5 means that f of 5 is defined the limit as x approaches 5 exists, and that the limit as x approaches 5 and f of 5 are the same value. That is the very definition of continuity. All right, so that's the end for today. Um, it's time for you to get practicing and learning. Uh, we got one more lesson to go in this all-important unit about the derivative continuity intermediate value theorem. I can't wait to share it with you. Until then, take care.